Welcome to Real People, Real Voices. I'm your host, James Jackson. I'm your co-host, Pastor Wayne Moore. Always a pleasure to host with it you. It is, James. It is. It's good to be here. We've got a great guest today. Yes. And she's going to be uh, sharing some very, very important information with us. She's the president of True You LLC. Emotional Intelligence. Intelligence. Right. Also known in some uh, areas as EQ. Right. Emotional Quotient. Right. Uh, Sono Shesh Zorari. You, you did well. Did I? Yes, you did well with her name. Yeah, I've been working on I'm not going to tell you what I'm going to call her, but we'll, <laughs> we'll get to it when we, when we need to. All right. We also want to thank our sponsors, uh, Lee, Castle and Crawley. Yes. Nathaniel Lee does a great job in our city uh, and his partners as well. So let's keep supporting him. Uh, give him a call. He's ready to help you. Yeah, Stuart Mortuary. Yes, uh, don't die and uh, not check with them first. Uh, Stuart <laughs> Mortuary is a great place. Fervent Care, Child Care and Christian Academy, Christian Clean, Caring and Convenient Child Care. Give them a call at 317-898-2751. Yes, great show today. Yeah, and we want to encourage you also to go to our YouTube channel at WHMB Channel 40. You can watch this show over again. You can also watch shows that you might have missed. Like us on Facebook. Yes, sir. We're liked on Facebook. We get a lot of hits. Keep hitting us up. Yeah. We'll keep giving you the information. And this show today, I think, is going to help you in your thinking and understanding your emotional intelligence. And we might be able to share some information with regard to some testing or some information to help you to gauge that. Right. And she's going to help us think our way out of situations that we need to be grateful that so so is with us today. Yeah. Stay with us. We'll be back after this. Welcome back to Real People, Real Voices. I'm your host, James Jackson. I'm your co-host, Pastor Wayne Moore. And we're joined today by Sono, who is the president of True You LLC. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. This is an honor. You're welcome. And you're the founder of this uh, particular organization. What was the precipitate, what precipitated you starting this? Um, I actually started it back in 1992 when I um, started teaching high school. Uh, for inner city kids and uh, my students would always show up in the science classroom just not being true to who they are and just really back in the day just guiding them and reminding them of how powerful and important it was to stay true to get where they need to go. Yeah. As especially in the face of adversity um, because I, being an immigrant to this country and you know facing the adversities we had um, when I heard students constantly saying I can't I won't you know this is not working for me mm -hmm. it was about teaching them mm -hmm. how to change that language how to change that vocabulary so it started back then and it has evolved since I've moved to Indiana uh, now into my professional speaking where I work for organizations to teach them about how to build relationships and communicate better uh, by focusing on your emotional intelligence skills and how you can improve you know the bottom line basically define that Define what? <laughs> emotional developing skills or developed skills. You know, I know there's emotional intelligence is a big hot topic out there mm -hmm. right now. And um, so there's going to be a lot of formal definitions. I really honestly just for myself alone believe that it is the ability to be self-aware and intuitive about what you have within and showing up every day in your power. So if you have social awareness, empathy, if you have the ability to be self-aware of how you're showing up, then it, it gives you the power to communicate better, which allows you to build relationships and foster what you need to foster. That's amazing. So yeah. I show up as I am, and I Absolutely. won't allow anybody to rob me of that. that Absolutely. Being authentic in who you are. I think a lot of people are terrified of being vulnerable. I don't have that problem. <laughs> we know. Uh, <laughs> well, you did call me so-so, so, -so, so yeah. I could tell. So yeah. that was awesome. But. Um, <laughs> You know, I think when people think vulnerable, they think weak. Mm -hmm. I think when people think emotional, they think sappy and cheesy. Now, I'm all of that. I get that. Mm -hmm. But in the professional setting, when I'm doing, um, you know, speaking engagements, I'm in front of managers, uh, the bottom line users, the end users. You know, it's every single person comes from the same space. Mm -hmm. We all need to search within and learn about what we bring to the table and what makes that the value. And when we can do that successfully and we can connect and listen to others and their value, then we can easily 
have everyone feel important, and that increases, um, you know, productivity. And so you stated that communication is so important. Absolutely. In fact, uh, communication is said to be one of the most important words in the English language. Hmm. And we I all, uh, I don't think we get enough development in that area. Okay. Uh, my uncle used to say uh, in, uh, English or communication is like swimming. Many learn, but so few do. Mm -hmm. So what is it that you do with regard to emotional intelligence that helps people to become better or more proficient at communicating and therefore developing better relationships? That's an excellent question. You know, it looks a little different depending on the environment, right? If I'm in a professional environment where I'm working with C-level managers, that's going to have a different language to it. But the essence is all the same. Tap into who you are. If you are searching, and I'm going to give you an example if that's okay. Mm -hmm. If you are facing adversity right now, there's so many people losing jobs. Right. And right. they're being downsized. Mm -hmm. um, I'm in the fourth reinvention of my career. I just lost my job in June. And I decided, you know, I'm going to go out on a leap of faith because faith is everything for me. Mm -hmm. It's the opposite of fear. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to go out and I'm going to share with people how you can bounce back. What does it take? What tools do you have? And what resources can you use to help your communication, to help put yourself out there, reach out to other people, connect with other people, and let them know that even if they've gone through something big, there's ways out of it. Mm -hmm. Communication, by teaching them that first, allows them to tap into who they are and being authentic, being true. So someone who wants to communicate better now, when I speak to the both of you amazing men, I can look in your eyes. I can truly listen and not do my maybe my grocery list in my head, for right, example, right? right? Yeah. I could truly listen to what your needs are, where you want to go, what's important to you, what you value, and then guide you on how you can tap into that as your momentum. You know, I like what I'm hearing and what I'm, what I'm seeing in you as a, as, a, as a young lady. To lose your job in June, mm -hmm. and it sounds like you were happy you lost it. I mean, <laughs> I mean, uh, you, to, to listen at you talk uh, because of what you do, uh, it, it's, it's, it's hard to determine that you were unemployed, are unemployed, or have been for a few well, more weeks. You know, yeah. just June. Just June, yeah, right. Yeah. I mean, this is amazing. So uh, what are you, what are you, when you go to these, these companies, these, what, how do you gauge your success when you deal with management? How do I gauge my if success? If there is a gauge. You know, that's a great question. Um, I just finished a great series with a very well-known um, company in here in, in Indianapolis. And the gauge that I use is when the audience is looking back and they're, I'm an engaging speaker. Mm -hmm. I, PowerPoints are fine. I'll do the outline. But what it's really about is talking to the people, mm -hmm. listening to them, taking what they've said and giving them an opportunity to speak and share. And when they bring that back to me and then I come back with a response and they're giggling and laughing, hopefully not at me. <laughs> <laughs> but giggling and laughing and sharing, that to me is a gauge of success. And I have been uh, privileged to just get actually some testimonials that just came in uh, that I'm going to be able to put on my site that said, you know, we were able to retain this information on emotional intelligence. And I played games and crafted um, games that the audience can get involved in mm -hmm. so that they could bring that to the table. And it's actually implemented. It's not just, I'm listening, I'm listening. OK, I'm going to go back to my desk. And I forgot everything I just learned. Mm -hmm. It's really about holding them accountable. And um, in today's society, it's really easy, really easy to go in victim mode. This is what's being done to me. The industry did this to me. I lost my job because of. We need to step out of that. Mm -hmm. And the moment I found I lost my job, I took about an hour to grieve. And then I said, I need to get my hustle on. What do I need to do mm -hmm. when I need to get back? And mm -hmm. um, that's what people get to learn. They, they get to understand that that's possible for everybody. Mm -hmm. I like that term. I need to get my hustle on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You wouldn't think a lady from India would talk about getting a hustle. Well, I grew up in Brooklyn, New York, <laughs> when we immigrated to the States. Yeah. <laughs> yeah she's going to get her hustle on. That's good. I'm, 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 you're a phenomenal lady. Mm -hmm. well, and um, to. About an hour you grieved about, yeah, I figured you didn't. I didn't work. have time. We just moved into our house, and a week later I lost my job. So wow. my husband's in education. I have a four-year-old toddler at my age, our miracle baby. And um, I, I, I had stuff to do. And uh, my family, when we immigrated here, we came with very little. And my mom has consistently, my mom and dad both, demonstrated to me, not just told me, Good. demonstrated to me, how do you overcome adversity? So I'm working on a book right now called How to Get Your Umph Back. 
How to get your oomph back. Because um, I have, this is my fourth round in 25 years of leaving different careers and creating and pivoting and designing new careers for myself. Yeah, outstanding. Mm, that's amazing. And we got to go to break, but yeah. when we come back, so sure. we want to talk uh, about how you can stretch your mind. Right. It is said <laughs> that we are all capable of doing 50% more than we're currently doing. Mm -hmm. And I think uh, as we do that... I'm looking forward to this, Doc. <laughs> <laughs> we, we, when we stretch ourselves, we discover our capacity. Perfect, yes. And people have more capacity than they probably realize. Absolutely. So we're going to come back and talk about that in just a little bit. Please go to our YouTube channel and become a subscriber. Share us with your other friends and your social networks. Like us on Facebook. A lot of great stuff. Mm -hmm. So stay with us. Refresh your coffee. Put a couple of extra ice cubes in that delicious <laughs> beverage you have. We'll be back after this. Welcome back to Real People, Real Voices. I'm your host, James Jackson. I'm your co-host, Pastor Wayne Moore. And we're joined by Sono. So are we today? Yes. Yes. Thanks again for coming. Thank you again. I, I love it here. It's awesome. Thank you so much. And Tell us how to do it. Yeah, well, she, I wanted to say you're the president of True <laughs> Yeah, I'm you. sorry. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I want to know, James. I want to <laughs> you know. know how to stretch it. <laughs> yeah, I want to stretch this thing. <laughs> Tell us how to stretch this mind. You know, it's simple. It, it, you know, if you were to bullet point it in steps, how do, how do you... How do you stretch? How do you feel comfortable in what you're doing and realize, you know what, I've been here for a really long time. I got this. And then all of a sudden you're like, I don't feel anything different. That means it's time to stretch, mm -hmm. right? Uh -huh. Really make that shift. Here's my example. I left a great company in January of last year um, and it was awesome. I loved selling for them. I was wonderful. I did great at the job and I thought something's missing. Oh, the challenge. That spice is gone because I get this. Mm -hmm. And so I had IT person come to me and ask me if I would come with their organization and I've never done anything with IT. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I call my nephews for that, mm -hmm. <laughs> or my nieces and nephews. And I said, okay. And I left a stable career and went there out of a space of fear and a space of nervousness and a space of discomfort. I stretched. And by stretching, I was authentic and honest about it. I told them I didn't hide anything. And by sharing that with them, I was able to go out into the, the universe of IT within Indianapolis. And I have met amazing and brilliant people. Every time I sold to get an account, I'm not from IT, mm -hmm. but let me tell you what I can do for you. Mm -hmm. To me, that was my huge stretch. If you are really comfortable in a space and you're not growing, what are you doing to stretch? Yeah. We do our bodies every day, right? We, we, we go at work out, we do yoga. I kind of like calling it yoga for the mind. Mm -hmm. What's your downward dog pose there? Mm -hmm. And um, it's really, really delivered some amazing results. Scary results, uncomfortable results. Takes Powerful. courage, takes yeah. courage. Absolutely. And people might say, Sono, that you have that, you have the drive, you have the spontaneity. There's something uh, very, very extraordinary about you but you're suggesting that just about anybody can yeah. have this umph. Yeah. So how, how do we pull that out? You know, the Bible says in Proverbs, Dr. Mm -hmm. Moore, a wise man has that wisdom, but it has to be drawn out. Right. So how do we draw this out of people? And the potential that people need to see within themselves. Or how do, how do I draw it out of myself? When I'm coaching and working with clients, if they are open to it, I, I really believe taking a moment and listening to your breath. Meditation is an amazing space. And um, it's a spiritual conversation. It, it doesn't matter what um, religious background you come from. The ability to sit still and listen to your own, to, to, the, to the voices within your own breath. And I know that kind of sounds whoo out there, but if you really do that, you'd be amazed on how all of the answers are within. Mm -hmm. And when you take a moment to say, truly, what are my strengths? What are my passions? What am I good at? Okay, where I'm missing, where the gaps are, motivation, uh, financial, I've been there. Um, I have a lot of people, even at my uh, daughter's school, who says, oh, you must come from a lot of money. Actually, I'm unemployed, but thank you very much for the compliment. Mm -hmm. Because I show up with attitude of abundance. Mm -hmm. 
You know, if attitude I, of abundance. If no. you come you, from a source of attitude of scarcity, like I can't afford this or I don't have this, that's what you're going to create for yourself. Mm -hmm. So when I go out in your space, what I would encourage each of my clients to do is walk in the path of abundance, in gratitude. You know, think about what you can and not what you can't. I say yes to everything and then I go home and figure it out. Mm -hmm. And I'm terrified. So no, you said something that's so phenomenal because when we look at uh, religious backgrounds, mm -hmm. They think that, and we think that, that uh, abundance is stuff. Mm -hmm. Oh, no. You're giving us a totally different twist on no. it. No. Go so, to India. You'll hear all about what abundance is. Yeah. I mean, people live in homes um, that have, even the wealthiest people, that have a little bit of stuff, but they have a lot of a lot of love. Mm -hmm. To me, personally, uh, learning from my uh, faith has been abundance comes in love. It comes in giving. And I can't be considered a giver if I'm not learning to receive, because then I'm not balanced. Mm -hmm. So a lot of times people think, I'm going to give, I'm going to give, I'm going to give. Mm -hmm. But then when someone else is trying to give to them, they're like, no, no, I'm okay, I'm okay. Well, they're not allowing that person the joy of giving. Mm -hmm. So really, being a giver is a true balance. Right. You had asked, where does that come from? Each of us already have it from within. I believe that. And because I believe that, I've been able to kind of help others see that path. And in that journey, as they sit still and listen, it's teaching them to be inspired. Don't get me wrong, I go home and I'm tired. Mm -hmm. I have my life story and my stories, um, but I don't allow myself to stay there and hang out very long. And when I need to, I will always uh, throw out something to a friend. I've created my village. Create your village of people in your life. Be true to yourself and that's who you will draw into your space. Right. Create that village and say, if you see me, going in this direction and derailed, please send me a life jacket. Mm. And be willing and courageous enough to receive mm. that. Yeah, That's where it comes from. In American vernacular, and I'm going to be cliche when I say sure. this, uh, people, we've heard people say, be intentional. <laughs> be intentional. Yeah, yeah that's or what the, I want. Or the power, power of intentionality. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So let's break that down for mm -hmm. uh, the folk at home. Um, again, to me, intention is vision. It's having a purpose. Everything I do is with purpose. Even when I, even if one of my clients is struggling with something, I'm going to say, that's fine if you're struggling. Struggle with purpose. Mm -hmm. Because everything has a lesson. And so being intentional is, is really setting your mind to it. And that's kind of where that stretch comes from. You can't set your mind to something if you're not stretching. Because one of the sessions I did on how to stretch today, um, I had a bunch of rubber bands. And th this group of folks came into the room. It was 3 o'clock, the end of the day. They were tired. They were like this. And by the end of the session, um, we're, we're flinging rubber bands into the air. They're all hugging. They're like, I didn't know we could feel this way. Mm -hmm. So I didn't give them anything. That was all within them. It's teaching them to tap into it. You broke free. Help them to break yeah, free. Yeah, be okay with that. Because once they see that people, if they hang out with the right, if they start sourcing the people in their space and everyone is appreciating that and encouraging that, it's a language. Yeah. You all speak the same language and you get to be who you are. Now, what do you do when you're in a space that they don't speak the same language? When you're at work, when you're in an office space, you still get to show up that way because guess what? That gets to be contagious. Mm -hmm. And when it's not contagious, the others will know that they feel a little, that person, no matter what is thrown at them, is still showing up with strength and not giving in. Yeah. Well, the purpose of the rubber band is to stretch. Yes. Absolutely. Yes. So we all have a lot of resiliency, mm -hmm. um, but we have to be put in situations where we can discover that. How can people connect with you? Um, I am, my website, and I know it's sonalchefzawari.com or haveyoustretchedtoday.com. Uh, that's how you can reach me. I'm also on Facebook under True You, um, and you can uh, even friend me on uh, Facebook and LinkedIn as well at Sonal Shet Sawari. Yeah. Do you go out and do uh, seminars and presentations? I thank you for asking. I do actually. I am pitching some to a couple companies right now, and just got accepted for that. They called it. Congratulations. They called it. Yes, thank thank you. And I'm getting ready to do some conferences in October. Um, and uh, so I, I am looking forward to expanding on this. This is my life purpose and vision. And I give a lot of gratitude uh, to my husband for his patience and allowing me to do this um, with faith. Well, you know what? To hear you talk and to hear your presentation, he does it because he's discovered you're easy to love. Oh, thank yeah. you. And all the best to you and what thank you do. Thank you so much. Thank you all for joining us. Stay with us. We'll be back with The Rundown.
Welcome back to Real People, Real Voices. I'm your host, James Jackson. And I'm the co-host, Pastor Wayne Moore. And I'm Curtis Baker, your marketing director. What an incredible uh, segment there with Sono. Yes. Stretching. Stretching. Emotional. You know, I've heard it called EQ, emotional mm -hmm. quotient. Right. Mm -hmm. But uh, I think she's simplified it to say emotional intelligence. Wow. What I like about it is you can be in her presence and you can be having a bad day. But at the end of the day, you end up stretching rubber bands. <laughs> yeah. That's pretty good. Yeah, and, and joyful. Yeah, about it. You know, that's, that's amazing. I mean, you come in one way and go out another. Wow. And uh, she's such a bubbly young lady. Right. And um, because of that, I think that uh, she has a magnetic personality, magnetic voice. And that's what people need to hear in times like these. Yeah. And just having lost her job in June, right. you would have never known it. Never no. known it. She Her looks like a million bucks. Her yeah. attitude is so contagious. Right. Yeah. I mean, I was sitting out there listening to her, you know. Did you anybody, actually catch something, my friend? I actually caught something. Right. I, you know, I was stretching. Okay. And uh, she was saying something about, you know, just being in a room with people, particularly on the job. And, you know, sometimes everybody have a different attitude. And mm -hmm. if you put that positive attitude in that room and how everybody just gets contagious, mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a great thing to do. Well, yeah. We're going to pray that God gives her favor. Um, she needs that. Indianapolis needs that. These companies in Indianapolis need that. And I think people need the fact that you can reinvent yourself, as right. it were. Right. Uh, because in the market that we're in now, there is no guarantee. And There's everything no guarantee. that's been is not broken. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, there's no guarantee you're going to be working next week. Right. Uh, these mergers and hostile takeovers right. and companies selling their companies. Years ago, I thought about the concept of Incorporation U, mm -hmm. uh, whereas you have all these gifts and talents. Mm -hmm. And while we've moved away from the industrial age, now we're in this information mm -hmm, age, mm -hmm. you have to be able to do more than just a few things. Absolutely. Right? Absolutely. Yeah. So thank you for joining us today. We certainly appreciate you spending time with us on this evening. Please go to our YouTube channel on WHMB TV 40. Become a subscriber. Also, like us on Facebook. We'd love to have you as one of our friends. Again, thank you for being a part of the show on today, and we'll see you next time. Pastor Moore loves you.